Good morning and welcome to Castle Kerry Methodist Church, those of us in the building, those of us joining us on Zoom. Um, I've got a couple of notices before we start. The first one um, is a little bit sad. Um, some of you will know uh, that Oliver Morrison passed away uh, this week. There is a card for Judy uh, from our church community um, at the back. Um, I know some of you signed it on your way in, but if you would like to sign that, um, we will uh, share that with Judy uh, this afternoon. So if you uh, could do that before you leave, if you're interested, that's, uh, that would be lovely. Um, and then secondly, um, hopefully you've had the notices, uh, but in two weeks time, so on Saturday the 19th, of November, we're holding a coffee morning and bacon and autumn sale. Um, I know there will be some knitted things. There will be, I think, cake. Uh, uh, I've definitely got chutney, uh, but anything anyone wants to contribute, but any uh, contributions to uh, either things to sell or um, to help with coffee or bacon, uh, if you could see Dave or Archie, I believe uh, they are in charge. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> God of the light times and God of the dark times, as the days draw in and the darkness of winter approaches, surround us with the light of your love, that we may turn, uh, meet, we may in turn, may be a light to the world. Draw us into your perfect light. We worship and adore you. Amen. Uh, and I think all that uh, remains for me is to welcome Colin to lead us in our communion this morning. And hopefully I'll press the right button. Well, good morning, everyone. It's, uh, it's lovely to be here this morning and uh, also extend greetings to all of those who are joining us online. Um, we're so sad that you can't be here with us in person, um, but it's the next best thing. And uh, it's lovely to, to have you join us in that way. So this morning we come together, we gather to, to worship God together. And so I invite us to stand as we sing our opening song together, How Great Is Our God.
Yes, Lord, you truly are great. We think of your love and your sacrifice. We think of, of all you do to hold and keep us, of your sustaining love. Lord, we have turned to so many other things, but none of them can sustain and hold like you. How great is our God. Lord Jesus, we remember with gratitude those people who generously sowed the seeds of faith in our lives. In this month of remembrance, we give thanks for the people who have led us in faith. Above all, Lord, we recognize how you have blessed our lives with the gift of the Holy Spirit so that our faith has miraculously and mysteriously grown. We come also, Lord, to confess our sins because we know that you are merciful and just and that you offer forgiveness. And so we come and we confess the times that we have failed to involve ourselves. We are sorry, Lord, that we haven't been active in planting any seeds of faith of our own in the lives of others. Forgive us, Lord, for the times when our personal agendas have become more important than yours. The times when we have denied others the opportunity to expand their faith through our own lack of interest or involvement. Forgive us, God, when our lives become so entangled with the values of the world when you no longer are the one who is great and we place other things in that place. Forgive us for when we forget what you have said, what you have done, and what you have promised. Lord Jesus Christ, we know that when we become disconnected from you, our lives become parched and unfruitful and our faith becomes stunted and dry. We come to you, Lord, this morning, asking that you would bless and renew our lives so that we can remain connected to you at all times and in all places. Strengthen us in our faith, we ask. Expand and grow us. Help us to bear fruit, the fruit of your mercy and your love and your undying life. Unite us, Lord, in love, we pray, as we say together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them as we trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the land of the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. I'm going to ask our scripture readers to come forward and read for us this morning. Luke chapter 6 beginning to read at verse 20. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven, for that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. 
won't you when everyone speaks well of you? For well, that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who mistreat you. Someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. Someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from him. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Thanks be to God. My reading is Psalm 149. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of his faithful people. Let Israel rejoice to their maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Let his people rejoice in this honor and sing for joy on their beds. May the praise of God be in their mouths and a double-edged sword in their hands to inflict vengeance on the nation and punishment to the peoples. To bind their kings with fetters, their nobles with shackles of iron, to carry out the sentence written against them. This is the glory of all his faithful people. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Thank you for those scripture readings. And in response to God's word to us this morning, we are going to sing together while the stewards wait on us for our offering. To be in your presence. Think of uh, those who are in hospital, those who are in need of healing. We lift them to you. We pray for the hungry. 
We pray for those for whom winter is a, a terrible prospect. We ask for your will. And so, Lord, as we answer your call upon our lives, help us to, to live for justice and mercy and to use these, uh, this offering and the offering of our lives to further your kingdom and to share your love with the Lord. We pray this all in Jesus' name. As I was um, preparing uh, for the sermon today, I, I, I had you in mind, and I was wondering um, how we are doing in our faith. Um, uh, I don't know about you, but um, November, uh, it's, we're only just into it, but it, it feels really long. <laughs> uh, and I, I don't know if it's because we've come from the Southern Hemisphere into the Northern Hemisphere, but it's just... It's, it feels like one long winter, and it's just it's not relenting. Um, and then uh, I, I've thought of some of our, some of our occupations, and uh, some of us are teachers, and maybe it's feeling like one long winter for you. You've just had a half term that oh, it doesn't seem to last, does it? Um, I know my children, they, they wish they could have had a, a longer time off. But I think sometimes we face like a long winter in our faith. Because we look at the world around us and we look at the things that are happening around us and we just feel so overwhelmed by it. Like, like there's nothing we could do to change it. Um, Lord, we want to follow you. We believe in this, in, in, in what you are doing. We believe that you've come to save the world. We, we believe that you've come to, to change things and change things through us. But as, as hard as we try, as, as much as we work at it, 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 it feels like we're losing it doesn't it? Um, you just have to turn on the news. I've discovered um, BBC Radio 4. And, uh, and um, halfway through my journey, I, end up, oh, I just need to listen to some rock or something because I, the, the news can be just so depressing when we hear about everything that's going on. And so part of what I want to do this morning is I want to try and assure us in our faith. I want to... Um, uh, I'm not that charismatic, but I'm hoping that something that is said today will, will, will stir us up and, and, um, and revive us in what Jesus is doing in the world. And a, an illustration that comes to mind, it's, it's not my own, it's, uh, I've got it through uh, another preacher I, I follow. But um, this illustration comes to mind uh, of a friend of mine uh, she's one of those really annoying friends who beats you at everything. Do you have a, a friend like that? They just somehow they're just better at it than you. So this, this friend of mine and I, we eventually decided that we can't play tennis together because it was either tennis or our friendship. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, it didn't matter what we did. He, he would run faster. He would beat me in in uh, maths tests, uh, which isn't that hard to do. Uh, he would. Um, and his favorite thing to beat me at was, was chess. And he was one of these really annoying strategists because um, you'd be, what I thought was halfway through the game and he would move a piece and he would say, you've lost. So the game isn't over yet, but that's his winning move because he knows, he can see, I don't know how, he can see like three or four, four moves ahead that because of what's just happened, it's game over for me. Um, but I, and I might still take his queen and I might still have a few little victories along the way, but he knows that at that point, that is the victory move. The game is won, but it still goes on, but the game is won in that moment. I want you to just think of that picture as I continue. So something that I think is often missed, or at least not focused on enough um, in Jesus's ministry is that Jesus, the son of God, the Messiah is a revolutionary. Yes, he healed the sick. He brought the dead to life. He ministered to children and showed kindness and mercy. 
but his aim is to confront and overthrow systems of evil in this world. His mandate, his charge is to bring good news to the poor, sight to the blind, and freedom to the oppressed. He comes to cause a revolution, a revolution of love. And when I say that, don't, don't go all hallmarky and, uh, and, and mushy on me. When we talk about a revolution of love, it is something that is very real and very difficult to do. Luke chapter 6 begins with him uh, provoking the Pharisees. Jesus is walking along with his disciples on the Sabbath and they come to a field and the, the disciples gather grain and eat it. And the Pharisees are up in arms. Um, and Jesus says uh, these provocative words to them, the son of man is Lord of the Sabbath. He's, he's pushing the buttons. He's, he, he's causing a revolution. Then the next Sunday, they're in the, 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 they are in the synagogue and Jesus knows that the Pharisees are watching him. And there's a man who is in need of healing. He has, a, he has a lame hand. And defiantly, Jesus, looking at the Pharisees, calls the man forward and heals him. And says to them, is it better that you harm on the Sabbath or heal on the Sabbath? Can you see that he is beginning a revolution? So he's, he's healing. He's performing these miracles. He, there are these mysterious signs and people are gathering. People are coming. The revolution is about to begin. People have come from Tyre and Sidon, from Judea and Jerusalem. Uh, Jesus has this massive group of disciples gathered and he is beginning his revolution. He goes up to the mountain to pray. He comes back down and he chooses. He's organizing his revolution. He's getting his leaders together. So from among the disciples, he chooses the apostles. And then uh, he, he gives them, have you ever watched these like uh, battle movies? I love them. Um, they're not often historically accurate, but I love them. So like Braveheart. You know that, you know the, you know the, the, the battle speech, the, the one that's like stirs everyone up and now you're going to, now you're going to overthrow the enemy. Don't you just love those? Um, I love them. Um, and I won't recite some of the speeches that I've learned over time. But uh, so Jesus has gathered his revolution. What do you think his speech would be? I mean, what would yours be? How would you cause this revolution? Um, I know I'd have a stash of weapons. That would be, that would be my first thing. Um, I, would, uh, I would get the people bloodthirsty. You know, we're going we're gonna to overthrow overthrow the principalities here. We're going to storm, storm the city. Get ready. Let's storm the castle. Capture the throne. Let's gather all the evildoers and get rid of them. Let's catch them and burn them on a bonfire. But no, Jesus shows them what Walter Wink identifies as the third way. Not to fight, but also not to flee, but rather to expose the injustice of the enemy. How do you expose an enemy's injustice? Well, you take it to the nth degree. So if someone is going to strike you um, on, on the cheek, um, I don't know, how do, you, how do you slap someone? Have you slapped someone before? No, I hope not. Um, but uh, not today. <laughs> So if you, uh, if, if you slap someone, the way that you, the way that you slap a person um, who is of the same stature as you, with your right hand, with the palm of your hand, the way that you slap someone who is not of the same stature as you, so the way that men would slap women, the way that in, in, in my country, uh, in, in our history, the way a white person would slap a black person is with with the back of your hand. So when Jesus says, when someone strikes you, offer them the other cheek, what does he say? He's saying, expose their injustice. Take it to the nth degree. So if you're going to hit me that way, why not hit me the other way as well? Uh, if, uh, 
uh, he says, if someone takes your outer garments, give them your inner garments too. So uh, one of the ways that people would find you is they would take your outer garment. And if you'd been um, unfairly treated, uh, he, Jesus is saying, give them your inner garments too. Can you see that that then places, uh, that, that would make you naked and, and shameful, but the shame of your nakedness will, would fall on the one who took your inner garment. Who did this to you, Colin? Why are you walking around naked? Well, this person took my inner garment as well. So Jesus is, is calling for a revolution of love. They didn't know it at the time, but Jesus would, would be an example of this love. He would, he would show them the example of this love all the way to the cross. He would show them quite practically that love is the greatest power. At crucifixion, we would see that love wins. At crucifixion, we would see that there is nothing that we could do to God that would God make God react in vengeance or violence. That Jesus would say yes to the world that God envisions, a world of mercy and justice and love. And I think that was Jesus's winning move. At the crucifixion, God, God wins. Love wins at the crucifixion. Because we see that, that God is full of mercy and justice, even though we, are, we might, might have treated him mercilessly. So although the game goes on, God has played the winning mood. Evil is defeated and love wins. So what does that mean for us? Are you still with me? It means that even though there is injustice in this world, and think of the worst evils, it has already been defeated through the cross and the resurrection and God's winning move in Jesus. So we can think of that on a large scale, some of the terrible atrocities and, and injustices that happen in this world that make us think, God, this place is so broken and it can never be mended. God has already won the victory for us. But it is also true in the smallest aspects of our lives. When, when injustice falls upon us, when there's someone who's striking us, someone who, who, who causes us injustice and harm, hang in there in your faith because God has won. Love wins. So when we go up against the worst, we need to know that it has already been defeated. It just looks stronger than us at the time. It just seems as though it will always be there. But love wins, not evil. We know that through Jesus, love wins. That is the reality. Um, in, in the history of the, the country I come from, um, we thought that apartheid, that evil, would just be there forever. It would never change. But there were some who knew that Evil doesn't win. Love wins. And you might have heard of, a, 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 of a, one of our leaders, Desmond Tutu. Um, and there's this beautiful account of how often on, on, the, on the picket line, uh, on the protest line, as they faced the, the, the military force in front of them, he, would, he wouldn't taunt them. He would bless them with love. And he would say to the armies, come you still have time. Come and join us because this is the winning side. Come and join us because this, I can see through the love of God that this atrocity, this injustice will never last forever, but the love of God will last forever. We saw this um, in the Berlin Wall. There were, there, there were people who uh, lit candles in little coves um, at the base of the wall. Uh, and, they, and they prayed for the reality of a time when the wall would not exist. And they were called idealists. But they weren't idealists, were they? They were the realists. They knew that those kind of walls cannot stand forever because God wins in the end. Love always overcomes the evil in this world. And it makes me wonder about what other walls we've created in the meantime. I know, I know there's this wall in the US that we think 
will last forever, but I know that love wins. So we see that in Christ, love wins. We see that in the cross, Jesus never stops loving. The world tells Jesus, stop loving or we will kill you. Stop loving or we will remove you. And that is just what they did. They killed him. But that's like trying to get rid of glass by shooting it. You see, we learn through the cross that when you break love, love doesn't break down. It breaks open. It sends splinters all over the place. And so the splinters of Jesus' love broke open and they have changed the world forever. Please trust that as you follow Jesus and his way of love, it is the right way. Even though it doesn't feel like it at the time. Know that there will be times when you want to give up on your faith. Hang in there. You can, you, can, you can continue. In fact, Jesus even says to us, if you follow this way of love, you will be crucified. It's not going to be easy. But we know that in every sacrifice made in love, God takes that and resurrects it and raises us and our witness to new life and uses that to mend the world. So as we speak here this morning, what thing is God encouraging you to continue in? Maybe there's a, a person or, or something that you've kind of just given up on. Maybe you've been treated badly and you just feel like, you know what, I've got a revolution of my own. I encourage you uh, to follow the way of Christ. To be a disciple of Jesus is to follow love all the way to the end. And even if it's not always in our own lifetime, but if we follow that love, it is love that wins every time. I offer this to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so this morning we celebrate the enactment of this love, this love that wins, as we share um, in communion together. But before we do that, in preparation for that communion, we're going to stand and sing, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross.
we celebrate communion together, I invite you to share the peace of the Lord with one another. The peace of the Lord be with you. Please follow with me in as we go throughout this. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy. Gracious and holy Father, always and everywhere to give you thanks. In the beginning, the Spirit swept across the face of the waters, bringing order and beauty out of chaos. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. Though we turned away from you, your love remained steadfast, and you sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour, to be the Saviour of the world. At his baptism in the Jordan, he was anointed by your Spirit and revealed as your beloved Son. In the power of the Spirit, he was sent to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. Sharing our human nature, he died on the cross. Raised again in glory, he lives forever to pray for us. By the gift of the Spirit, whom you have sent in his name, you bring to completion the word of your Son, leading us all, leading us into all truth, making us a people for your praise, and giving us power to proclaim the gospel in the whole world. And so, with all the faithful of every time and place, we join with choirs of angels in the eternal Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night before he died, the Lord Jesus took bread, gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, give it for Do this in remembrance of me. After, after supper, he took, took a cup of wine. He gave it thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood as a new covenant, poured out for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of all his mighty acts, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, as a holy, living sacrifice. You send forth your spirit, you bind us in love, you renew the face of the earth. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and the blood of Christ. Unite us with him and with one another in mission to all the world, and bring us with the whole creation to your heavenly kingdom. Through Christ, Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, for blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. I could ask. So the table is prepared for us. Come and receive. Not because of anything we have done, but because of God's. <coughs>
We say together, follow the prayer. God of power, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. And may the gifts of your spirit equip us. Let us stand and sing our closing hymn together, uh, O oh, for a heart to praise. Thank you for coming to worship this morning. My prayer is that not just in this week, but in all the days ahead, that Jesus would enact his revolution of love in each of us and in, and in this community. We join together as we uh, say the, the benediction together. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Thank you, everybody.